floor, I'm laying on the floor. I'm taping this thing, so. <laughs> that part wasn't on there, so don't worry. So that's what we're talking about. People in for certain things, you know, we've said that before. Why don't people have these conversations? Some people do, and they press to have these conversations, but people lie. And people lie because they want what they want, and it's been so long since I know I haven't met anybody, and oh my gosh, he looks so good, and you know, I haven't met a working brother in a long time, and I just need, I need this wood. Right. Okay, I need, I need to get, I need to get down, baby. I need, I haven't had a man love me up in a long time, and especially one that's decent, good looking, that I need it. But it's detrimental to your health not to do so. And, it's, and as we saw in the video, it was detrimental to the brother's health even more because she shot him because she wasn't getting none. And when she finally did get some, she went crazy over it. Well, that's the problem. Going crazy over it. Now, see, I can get with people who say, you know what? I like everything you had to say, but that ain't me. So we came here. Right. Okay. Thank you, brother. Thank you, sis. I got it. I understand. We know most of the people ain't gonna do that. That's true. Um. So what do you say to people? Because people are gonna lie to you. Mm -hmm. So at some point, do you just have to say, let's uh. Go ahead and take the risk. Um, I think there's a difference between the person who blatantly lies to you and the person who believes that, yeah, I haven't done that, or yeah, I'm not really into that, or yeah, I've never experienced it. But I'm going to try. There's a difference between the blatant liar and the person who really genuinely wants to try. What's the difference? That there's a genuine desire to actually do it. That they do have the willingness other than the other person who knows, look, I don't have the willingness, but I'm going to say I do so I can get what I want. Or I'm going to pretend I do so I can get what I want. There is a difference. Okay. So who do you think does it more? What do you mean by that? Men or women? Because you know the listening audience, you know, they gonna wanna know and since we taping this and we having our conversation, you know, there's people out there who say, Well women play more games and men play more games. Um I don't really have an answer to that. Um as a, a woman who has had more conversations relationship-wise with other females, I know they play games and I've had conversations with men about the stuff men do and I know they play games. I can't say, oh, okay, well, I've spoken to 400 men and I've spoken to 750 women. I mean... I'm just thinking that I can't really answer that. Not truthfully. I mean, yes, I can guess and, and say women do. But I don't know. Yeah, I know the, the game playing is happening on both ends of that. I personally don't don't think that's a relevant question. I think that's the separatist. I'm just asking because I know a lot of times that's going to keep in mind. Yeah, because in the end, it doesn't matter who's doing it more. The fact is that it's happening, period. Whether it's men doing it more or women doing it more, it doesn't make a difference. Well, I do know that. They're all doing it, and that's that. Beating people up, cutting people up. I can't have, what is up with that? I can't have you nobody else, Will. Yeah, there was so. one of those types on there, too. What What is that about? It was like, you know what? What, what is that about? And people say, well, what do you mean what that's about? That's about these lying-ass men and 
You know, you try to tell them, look, just tell me the truth. And and what makes you think people only want you for the rest of their life? That doesn't even sound sane to me. That I'm, I'm, what is it about that? I and mean, I'm not just talking sexually. I mean, like, what would make you think somebody just, you're that great that you're going to cover everything this person needs for the rest of their life? Now, why would you want the pressure to be everything a person needs? It's just not possible. I don't see it being possible to be everything a person needs, and I don't want to be everything a person needs. And I told you uh, in the past, whenever somebody has said that to me, oh, you know, I know you're it, you're the one, because you're everything, and you're what I live for. That freaks me out, and I'm going to disappear without a trace. 100% without a problem. There's people who will say you're crazy, for freaking out. Why? Because they want to hear that? You want somebody to say you are the reason I'm living? Hell no. I don't want that kind of pressure. That's what all the songs and movies are about. Well, exactly. That's what the, the songs are just for you to buy them and it appeals to your emotional side and it works because we're all downloading and buying it, whether it's stealing it or paying. And the movies are the same thing to get you to go and spend money to see it. Hmm. So what do you think the rules of engagement? We got 22 year old Tom and 21 year old Jenny sitting right here. And they're saying, we love each other. We want to get married. You know, he's got a decent job. I got a decent job. We've known each other a while. Mm-hmm. What do you say to them? Because essentially what it gets down to is you're going to say um, either the way you're practicing marriage is wrong or the way that's not even going to marriage because that's going to get into a whole another you know, shebang. We're just talking related. Mm-hmm. Okay, you two are going out. So what should be the ground rules? Should it be the same for men and women? Should it be the same for any relationship? I mean, what are the ground rules? When you say, hey, these are the things you two need to discuss as the ground rules for your relating to avoid all this nastiness, BS, trauma, and drama behind someone wanting. We're not even going to talk about the fact that they're with somebody else, mm-hmm. just wanting to be with someone else. Well, the first thing you have to figure out is, are you both on the same page about what kind of relationship it is? Is it a casual relationship? Is it right. a serious relationship? Is it a non-monogamous relationship? Are you expecting me to be monogamous? And are you expecting this time that we're getting to know each other is just between the two of you and I should not be dating? Well, I've been dating before you showed up. I mean, what, you what, have to what, have the uh, conversation. I always use the word exclusive rather than monogamy. Because to me, it sets more, it's, it's clearer. Mm-hmm. So you say to the woman, if do you remember we had our time with that whole, and I was like, exclusivity. If you want exclusivity, mm-hmm. say you want exclusivity. Yeah. I want to be exclusive. I want to be your show, your one and only show. You know, all them songs, oh, to the left, you can't just, you can't be with me, it's this and that. And I could see when you are paying people's bills and giving them money and taking care of a bum mm-hmm. that's not a man, that you get into those situations and start hollering about being exclusive. Right. Because, hey, you're paying for that wood. Mm-hmm. Let's keep it real. Right. And vice versa. But a lot of women don't like that. Because there's more women hollering about it. Because there's more women that, okay, because we get into those situations or hear about them mm-hmm. where the man is expecting this exclusivity. Because he's paying for it. Right. Mm-hmm. 
So, I mean, what's the deal with that? So you you have to have the conversation, and you have to tell the woman that. You know, look, I don't mind taking care of you, sis. I don't mind taking care of your kids that don't belong to me. I will keep a roof over everybody's head, keep everybody fed. I'll make sure the bills are paid, but you need to be exclusive to me. You're not giving up your body, your time to anybody other than your children. Family members, yeah, I understand that. But you're not going to have sex with anybody else. And the woman needs to make up her mind. If that's okay with her. And 99.9% of them will say, hell yeah, I would be yours and nobody else's. Because they want that brother to take care of them. <laughs> and then everybody gets comfortable in their nice little new home family scene. And then Joe Schmo moves in next door with the dick from heaven. And... That's the end of that. It's unrealistic. It may not happen right away. It may not happen for the first three or four years. But that shit is going to happen. Plain and simple. Or there's women who say you're lying that they've never stepped out on their man. I, my grandmother never stepped out on her, her husband. They were married for 67 years. Yeah. And from God knows how long ago that was. We're not in that time anymore. So stop faking the funk. There's plenty of men that don't step out on their wives. And yes, there's plenty of women who don't step out on their husbands. But that's because that's what they choose to do. They've had that conversation and they don't want to. Or they haven't gotten caught. It's either one or the other. There's nothing wrong with that. Why is having that conversation so offensive and hard? Remember... I asked the question, why women can't have the conversation with another woman? I mean, it's okay for your church girlfriend to come over your house, eat your food, borrow your car, borrow all kinds of money, never pay it back. But it's, it's wrong for you to ask her to, I don't know, your husband would want a different grill. I mean, we've been married 15 years, mm-hmm. the kids are grown, it's this and that, you know, I like yeah, I want something different. But I ain't trying to go out here and ruin my marriage to you behind it because you're going to feel because I'm not exclusive to you or I went to a prostitute, mm-hmm. okay, that, you know, we can't be together or I'm doing something behind your back or I'm not trying to respect you. But if I brought it to you and said, look, I would like to experience something different. And many men, many men have told me, you know, oh, I can't do that. I tried talking about that and she flipped out and this and that and that. Or what I love is, well, when he was younger, he did something. And I had, actually, this individual was white. And he had had an affair. Sometimes early in the marriage or whatever. And another woman got pregnant. Mm-hmm. And although he had other, had other children with his wife and worked his ass off and took care of him, this and that, he was like, she was constantly in his mind. If you're watching a movie, and of course, what movie you're going to watch? It's not some love scenes or the whole jilted lover thing not going right. to come up. And that would just set her off. And then she will be going back and forth into it. Now, if you are married with children, to somebody, and yeah, some things happen, it's this and that, but it's like, wow, you got to relive that every single day, week, whatever. Who can deal with that? That is insane. I think so. And I hear brothers talk about the same thing. Okay, when I was younger, you know, she caught me talking or dealing with my ex-girlfriend or this and that and that, so, you know, she's always on me now. Or just the belief that I know you want some other booty. I know you're getting some other booty. The brothers tell me that. I'll talk about that. And I experience that. When you ain't doing nothing. Mm-hmm. It's like, and, and then he laughed about it because it's like, the stuff that you do do, you never get questioned about. Mm-hmm. I think that behavior, the majority of it stems from this sense of ownership that people have over their partner. Slavery? That's what we're talking about, slavery. Now, I black said, people I said ownership. Who's, whose whole thing, 
Maybe they don't even remember what slavery was, the way some of them act now. Mm-hmm. Are going to say, you're going to get in a relationship and make that person your slave? Mm-hmm. Because that's what ownership means. Well, I think people do have a sense of ownership. And when he's my husband and my wife. Husband is a role, you get not an object. It's a role. Husband is a role you play. To think that way. Being a father is a role you play. Being a wife is a role you play. Being a mother is a role you play. Mm-hmm. Seeing the increase of mothers killing their children, black and white, fathers killing their children, women with boyfriends killing their children. Mm-hmm. There's no jail time. There's beheading. Right. Go back to the French Revolution. We ain't playing with y'all. Let me show you. Mm-hmm. The guillotines was working. The 24 7. Okay? That's people who not playing around. And people get the message. We, we're not playing with you. Mm-hmm. If you're going to commit true. these that's atrocities, true. then guess what? We're not playing with you. Mm-hmm. Deal with it. And when enough people stand up, people understand. People say, oh, that just gets slicker. This is, you can't get more slick <laughs> than the people we deal with, okay? It's ridiculous. Why, if women believe that men are polyamorous in nature? Okay, we watched the clip. And the man told the women, y'all should be looking at older men, mm-hmm. these professional black women who didn't want to settle. Right. I'm looking for my my king. My king, my husband. And and I'm not gonna settle. I can get what I want. Okay. Okay. You get what you want. Um, but you know, he was telling them, look at older men and mm-hmm. men don't have a Clock, women have a clock. And, I think compromise was the word you used. You know, yeah, he said you got to compromise a little bit. Mm-hmm. Which, first of all, I was like, again, you're taking it from a pop culture stance. It, it's all wrong. And those are the wrong, wrong words to use because I don't believe it's a compromise. What I believe is stop playing with stupidity. Mm-hmm. If you really want to be married, then you can go get married. But see, it's not that you want to be married, you want some drink. And that's the reality. A husband is a role. A father is a role Mm -hmm. that a man plays. A mother is a role that a woman plays. A wife is a role that a woman plays. Mm -hmm. Now there's people now, because of the laws and because of the culture, well, the role ain't determined by the sex. I can be the father. I can be the mother. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. They are trying to make those roles interchangeable, but it ain't working out so not, well. No. So if you want a husband or you want a wife, you want this partner so you can date and this and that, and I don't want them cheating on me. So why is that not? You know, well, I, I can answer my own question. Because imagine us going out. It's our first time really getting together, not at the workplace or wherever we met, where it's just you and me. We get to have that conversation, our first real in-depth conversation. Um, and I know the first thing out of my mouth shouldn't be, well, I'm going to just tell you now, I don't like the woman I'm with talking to other men and texting them and hitting them up on Facebook and this and that because you probably get up and say, oh, I'm sorry, you know, my mom just got sick, and you know, I'll call you tomorrow, and then get up and leave. No, <laughs> honey, I wouldn't even be that bad. I'm not even going to give you an excuse. I'm just going to pick up my purse and <laughs> sling it over my shoulder and leave you sitting there with your mouth hanging open. Like, what did I say? No. So, people can't start out with what their expectations are. You can start out with what your expectations are with a little more tact than that. Okay, you so can what's, have the conversation. What's if tactful? You're in, you if and you're I, in the pretend you and I are just, we just getting into that space where we can talk. I would be, I would ask you, that would be in my top 100 of 200 questions. 
Well, you ain't gonna ask me, hopefully. Well, no, not on the uh, first day. Of course not. The first time we get together. But you're gonna start your questions, and I would, add, I would add, definitely, because I don't like to waste people's time, and I don't. Like and that two hundred questions is from Millie Fuller, by the way. So, you so know. it's like I'm gonna ask you what's important to me. I want to know sexually what your life is like. What do you expect? What have you expected? How many men gonna tell you the truth? I don't know if any of them have ever told the truth. That's the gospel right there. And women? The same. I'm not saying it's not a male female thing. I don't think like that. And this show is not about that. We don't go with. Okay. That. So when so people it's like get that, sometimes you just have to take that chance and think. Okay, you know, from conversations that you had, because hopefully this ain't your first one. It's not like, oh, you know, I saw you cross the street, you saw me, and let's go have this huge conversation. We already connected some kind of way. We've already figured out we like each other. So now let's do this face to face. You're having a conversation, ask the question. Ask the person how they view money. What do you what do you think financially secure is? What do you think about sex? What's a healthy sex life for you? What's not healthy? What do you like? What don't you like? How do you view partner roles? Do you think you prefer a woman in a traditional role? You want her to be home barefoot and pregnant, take care of your snotty nose kids? Do you <laughs> prefer to be the one to take care of the woman? Do you want your woman to work just like you? I mean, those are normal conversational questions that you can say on your first date in a, in a way to get the ball rolling. Are they going to tell you the truth? Nobody ever knows if somebody's going to tell you the truth. You got to go with your gut instinct. You got to go with what you know and go how you feel. So what if I, after we didn't done all that, and you told me, oh, you're the only one for me. What are you telling me that? The first night? I'm picking up my purse again, if you are. I, we can just nip that in the bud. I'm running, if you are. It went beyond all that. Say we're a few months down the road, and we've been seeing each other regular. We're not living together. We've been seeing each other regular. People know we're together. We're a so-called item. Mm -hmm. Okay? And... My ex-girlfriend Janet just came out from out of town. Right. And she like, well, I'm gonna be here a couple of days, you know, then we get together, you know, just have a meal, catch up. Mm -hmm. Now, for most men, because men know, it's not a whole lot of women that, you know, even if they thought about you in passing, are gonna reach out and try to connect with you especially if you've been together sexually, mm -hmm. unless they're looking for that to be open. Because most women know right. that if he's already been there, there's yeah, always no potential to go in again. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just for that. Mm -hmm. I, I can't stand mm -hmm. her, but you know, I get to hit them skins one more good time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, that'll be worth it. I'll take the funk for the evening and do what I'm going to do. And then it's like, I ain't got to see it. And that's, you know, a lot of men won't admit that, but you know, it's the truth. You know, men joke about it and talk about the 5150 girl, the crazy women, and this and that. And I, you know, you know my story. So they, they nuts. But would you go back there? You've been there. You was there for a reason. It ain't like you had sex with them the one time and left it alone. Mm -hmm. So something out of it was enjoyable. Okay? So, yeah, there are people who, nah. I ain't going there. She's too crazy. Right. Nah, I'm not gonna do that. She got too much drama. Nah, every time I see her, she's, you know, that that's good. But then, you know, they for the next three weeks, they're gonna be hitting me up for some months. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like mm -mm. <laughs> can't can't be dealing with it. And those are usual. But I, I say that because so we've been seeing each other now these three months, and that comes up. Mm -hmm. And you say, where are you going? Uh, I want you to go do this thing with me on Thursday night. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, I got some plans. It'll be, you know, not going to be available Thursday. So, and people have the signals. So the first thing is, most of the time, people do that because they didn't say anything specific. The person already knows that and it's a true. woman. That's, that's true. right. Or it's a man. When they're because not specific, when you, you already know it's another woman or another man. In any other aspect, I know who, what, where, why, and when. And now, all of a sudden, oh, I got plans. Of course you know, and you make it known. I mean, subconsciously, you must want to say it and can't because 
why else would you be oh so secretive all of a sudden when you're not any other time? Right. That makes no sense. So of course people figure out that. So it's what a would you say? Then? What would you say? To well, person? first of all, like I said, if we've already had the conversation, you're not going to be asking me that. You're going to know it's okay because we've already had that conversation. Ah, uh, people say that, but then doing it and putting it into practice is a whole other thing. Well, if this is you and I, and you're coming to me, and you're saying that to me, you know I'm going to say, well, good, good. Let's have, let's hang out. Let's see what's going on. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. Now, okay, I had to laugh. You know why? Because men will say this all the time. I said I was going to dinner with a friend on Thursday, or etc. No, Not me. Well, I didn't understand. I thought you were asking me <laughs> okay, I'm how do I feel about the person coming to dinner with us. Like, why would you be? No, no, no. That's not. It? That's not what I'm saying. Right. We've been dating for two or three months. Right. And so we out of that new space. People know we're an item. Right. We've been hanging pretty tough. An old girlfriend is coming to town. Right. She gives me a ring. Oh, I'm gonna be in town a couple of days. I wanted to get together. You know, let's catch up. Have dinner this now. So then you. So say then you I'm ask going me. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, I want you to do something with me on Thursday, and mm -hmm. I say, oh, I can't. I have plans. I'm doing something. So what would I say to that? I would say okay. Right, you. But the usual is again, we talk. We talking in hypothetical terms. Right. People know. That is something going on with a person of the opposite gender because you are so generic about it, number one. Or the lie is giving emphasis like, no, no, baby, I can't get with you. I'm doing something with the boys, with the fellas. I mean, JoJo or Tony mm -hmm. on Thursday night, and we're going down to do X, Y, and Z. And because, and, and this is where men really screw it up mm -hmm. because he put so much emphasis on it. It gives the female a chance to go ahead and like I'm gonna investigate this. Some do it out of they never are in a secure space to trust, mm -hmm. and some do it just because why you gotta lie to me? Why you can't tell me the truth? Mm -hmm. Instead of saying I knew you was lying to me, this and that, and that or saying to the person then, hmm, I'm gonna just be honest with you. That doesn't sound too kosher to me. Mm -hmm. So. I don't want you, you know, we just start now, and I told you how I felt. Right. Now, and this is me speaking as a Mars in my mind. Mm -hmm. I know it's not going to be like, well, this is how all the Venuses would see it coming across better. But I'm saying in a man's mind, a reasonable man's mind, he would hope if the woman is going to try to check him, this is how it's going to come out. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound culture. You know we talked about if you want to see other people or... You know, just if you're meeting uh, us, or you know, we have old friends or in the past or this or that that want to see each other and this and that. Right. And we said, you know, we're not going to do that. Oh, uh, you know, you should have a conversation about sex. Mm -hmm. And you should talk about stuff before it happens. Meaning, we talked and we said, you know what, if either of us are going out with somebody from our past, it's this and that. Um, some people say, you know, everything is off limits. And some people who say, go for what you know, you know, but have a decency to let me know that so right. I'm not in the dark because it doesn't come back to bite me. Mm -hmm. Or people say, I don't want to know anything and you shouldn't be doing it. Right. You know, you've got the gamut. So yeah. whatever you agree on in those terms, that's what you just like, you know, we agreed that if we're meeting partners from the past or this or that for whatever reason, that, you know, we weren't going to go back there and have sex with them because. It's detrimental in the long run. So, but if that's something they really wanted to pursue, mm -hmm. then we would both feel free to let that person know, you know what, I'm with somebody that we'll have to discuss that. Right. Meaning we can put that on the table. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to guarantee you I'm going to do it or that it's open. Now, I know for a lot of people that sounds unrealistic because they're unused to having a mature conversation right. around the sex. Mm -hmm. Meaning people are human beings and they have the sex. If you and I are starting now, we need to have a time period where we can be exclusive, mm -hmm. where we can just be you and me, so we can get that energy locked in and get it good. If I'm starting out seeing you and I'm having sex with my ex, 
even if it's just, well, we only see each other every other couple of weeks. Like if the kid, they haven't met anybody and, you know, I mean, I don't want her stripping out on my kids, so, you know, I'll give her something. Right. And for a lot of people, especially right now, especially over 40, the ex-sex is a big thing. A big thing. they already been there. They know what they like. And for them, they don't, they feel like we're already split up. We're not going to get back together. But this just appeases what I need. And most of the time, even though they want to admit it, it's the women. Mm -hmm. Because the men, the men gonna get what they gonna get. Right. But it's the women, and it's the women because okay, if you're over it's forty with children, they know it. I'm not going back out on the dating market to mm -hmm. compete with that. Exactly. There's a guy that I know. I know what he, he knows what to do to please me. I don't mm -hmm. have to teach him anything. This and that and that. I'm not seeing him regular. I'm basically just getting hit off when I need to get my release, and that's right. it. Right. But it's detrimental. Because especially if the woman or that man is dealing in another relationship. Mm -hmm. Because they're not getting a chance to let that energy bond. And that's what it's really about, the energy. You don't need to be worried about your partner sharing a being with another person because of STDs and other stuff. That's important, but it's really about the energy. Right. You have more risk of stuff happening when they're forced to run out here and get their 5, 10, 15, 30 minute quickies with their friend at work, with some strumpet on the street, right. whether it's male or female, with the person next door that ain't got nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. Because that energy associated with that is negative. And the thought that is associated with negative. Exactly. So, let's do it the other way around. You ask me, oh, what you do this year Thursday? Oh, my friend coming from out of town. She wants to get together for dinner. Would you like to do that? You can go with me. Of course I'll go. You have okay. a good time. Because a lot of people say, I don't want to go to dinner with you and some girl you used to mess with. Marking her, what you trying to do? Get me in something. And again, people always go zero to hundred. They take it straight <laughs> to the threesome. You trying to get me in a threesome? This and that and that. Having some freaky sex with some woman? And you like, where does that come from? All the men, I, I know for a fact, they get the the dump. Because where the hell did that come from? I wasn't even talking about that. Didn't even bring up that subject, but that's where a lot of people go. And, I, and I've seen it a million times, not just personally experienced it, I've mm -hmm. seen it. Mm -hmm. And you're like, wow, why did she do that? Why did she say that to him? Right. Oh, other men, usually with the men, they feel very, it's an ego thing, they feel threatened. You call me, or, uh, you know, hey, I know you wanted me to do this now on Thursday, but I think, you know, Timbo is coming to town and, mm -hmm. you know, he asked to, you know, can we catch up with a dinner, this and that and that, you know, I'll be open to seeing you afterwards. No, no, that's all right, go on with your man, go ahead, go ahead, you go, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. uh-huh. Is that what you'll say to me? Uh-huh. What is that about? You got an attitude about it? I mean, you know, I'm telling you about it. It's not like I'm trying to do it, but that the way people socialize, men are going to think, well, Especially as a woman, you ain't going out with him to catch up if you wasn't still interested. What do you have to say to that? I have to say to the whole, both of those scenarios, is how does the healing ever begin when shit like that goes on? When tell me, tell me what that means. The attitude of the male ego tripping because she wants to see her ex-boyfriend or the female tripping because he wants to see his ex-girlfriend and even if she doesn't know it and she just has an inkling and, she, and because she doesn't want to have the conversation the inkling turns into this you know night of but make it romantic sex when all he said was i'm going to have this or if you don't even know what the situation is, you just blow it out of proportion. The same thing with the brother. She said, I'm going to meet a friend who's coming into town. 
Timbo, my friend who's coming into town. How does it go from I'm going to see my friend who's coming into town to uh, I know she's going to be screwing him. I know they're going to be bouncing each other off the wall. What is that? Because people are people. You may have shared some things. We've all shared things. We're all anywhere between in our late 30s to our early to mid 50s. Who the hell hasn't shared something by then besides Mother Teresa? So Nobody. people get into this get operating it. mode of, again, if you've already been there, it's easy to go back through that door. Personally, this is what I say. Let's have an exercise in eliminating the BS. Mm -hmm. So when my friend would call me and say, oh, I want to take you to dinner, since you and I have been jogging, we've had those conversations, and I say, well, you know, I'm seeing this woman right now, so the queen would like to come, you know, I'm quite sure she would enjoy meeting you and this and that and that. Usually then I get the, the silent shutdown. The crickets. You know, I get the silent shutdown because <laughs> women especially do not want to have a conversation. But because I'm not a woman, I don't know what it's like from the male side. And you said the same thing happens. Mm -hmm. It does. It doesn't matter if it, you're, like you said, you're the male, so you're going to get it from the female side. But I'm a female, and I get the same thing from the male side. So your ex calls and you say, like well, oh, yeah, I'd love to bring Blue with with me. And, and you know, y'all would probably, you know, he does this and that and that. Oh, y'all would great. probably you want to come? I want to come visit you. Oh, that is so cool. I'll tell him to pick you up at the airport. Dead silence. I'm like, hello? <laughs> <laughs> we can go to dinner. We can have a great night. What is the problem? I don't. Is it selfishness? No. I just, I know we said the three S. Scared, selfish, and sneaky. Scared, selfish, and sneaky, yeah. Mm -hmm. But is it the selfishness that people just, I don't want to share you with somebody else. I want you to have you all to myself just for dinner. I can't that get that. That doesn't make sense to me. I that can't get that. Sense. Oh, oh, oh I, let me How tell you. Can, wait a minute. How can they say they don't want to share you when you ain't even together with them anymore? You know, these are past relationships. And yes, we know about the hoverers. We know about them. It's past relationships. You already know the person is with somebody else. It's not a secret. You're not like hoping against hope. Oh, oh. Well, there are some out there that are that. waiting. Yeah, I'm sure there are. But that ain't the case with nobody in this house. So if no, no, that's not what us, we're saying. We're saying as, as if topic about this us, topic, you got people who... They really do hope that they can ruin or mess up yeah. the person's relationship with whoever they got with. Mm -hmm. uh, ex-wife or ex-husband may want to sabotage True. the new relationship with a new spouse, um, you know, so they can get the spouse back mm -hmm. or, you know, just sometimes just to create habit, just to try to make your life miserable because you chose to leave me or not be with me anymore mm -hmm. or xyz right you know that's the madness that goes on it's unfortunate but it's true so when we're talking about that what i'm saying is people are reaching out to you i didn't say we reached out to two different individuals what i'm saying is in those scenarios people mm -hmm. are reaching out to you mm -hmm. to try to connect up with you and you turn it into what would be acceptable for you without saying, well, look, if you want to see me, you got to see my new woman, too. Okay, that's just, yeah, come on, hit yeah. somebody with a hammer. Definitely but you not. don't have to do that. You could, you know, like I said, just say, hey, well, you know, I'm seeing this person right now. And, um, you yeah. know, I think it would be great for us all to get together and, mm -hmm. and then you get the dead silence. Because, you know, it's like, they take an offense to it, and it's like, what, what are you, what are you expecting? What are you hoping? That's what I'm saying. Like, why you, you already know that the person is involved with somebody else. So why, why would the surprise be there that they say, I want to include this person? I want to include the person I'm with now. What, what would be the reason for you to be so? Because they upset want about you that? for themselves. Your, remember you, you brought it up. You said possession. I said slavery. They mm -hmm. want you for themselves. Mm -hmm. I can't, I don't deserve a couple of hours. Of, and I have, and I said, was saying that. That's why I'm glad I brought it back around. 
because I have had these words at different times to say, I don't, I can't get this and that in that time, but if, uh, that's for me, this, I don't deserve this and that. oh yeah, oh yeah, honey, mm -hmm. taking it there all the way live. Wow. I don't deserve this and this and this. I can't get all that I might have done for you and this and this. You can't give me an hour. This and, that, and they feel that that attitude is going to force for that in you. No, they, they don't. That, oh well, maybe he'll punk out to me saying all this and this and this, and then he'll you know he'll do what I want, and then once I know you're going to do what I want, now I got you. So I think if I give you a little bit, then if my motive is money. If my motive is I need you to do something for me that I don't want to do for myself, whatever the case may be, I could probably get it out of you. And the same thing with the men. You know, a lot of times with the men, they change insects. Mm -hmm. they're, they're looking for hassle-free food, mm -hmm. hassle-free tea. That's what it's called. Mm -hmm. So I can fly in, see you, this and that and that, spend a good time. Hey, I want to dine you. I'm going to put the charm on. Homeboy might not be handling his business. I can get in, enjoy it. Oh, got to get my flight back, this and that. This thing be real. Mm -hmm. I'll get in touch. Okay. And that's what they hope for. Because there are a lot of thing. women and men who do that. Mm -hmm. Let me reach out and tap so-and-so. I need to see if I can get $100. Mm -hmm. $500. Get my rent paid. Yeah. Oh, let me reach out home, bro. I'm going through. It's my chance to get some booty since this person I'm living with mm -hmm. doesn't seem to think sex is a viable thing in life. Right. And a lot of men say that. That, oh, it changes after you get married, bro. They don't want to have sex then, which I really don't know what that's about. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's just kind of be like, you know, you need to take them rings off. And stop playing the game. Well, yeah, that's a, that's the bull because that attitude was always there. You just didn't see it. You didn't want to see it. You didn't want to notice it. You didn't want to acknowledge it. But oh, you don't roll up one morning and decide, you know what? I don't have sex with you no more because I don't like you because I don't think the sex is good because I don't want you because you don't make me feel right. She was thinking that all along. She Ooh, just was holding it. There's in. women who want to pour gasoline and burn you up for some right. Time. Burn you up and saying that. Right How dare you say that, that they gained there. some man that oh, thought please. that he was laying the pipe to them so please. good that they he was oh, the only one for them and they was going to want to love him up forever. Yeah, okay. And that's the same thing with the man who thinks, oh, yeah, I know she just loves me for me. Yeah, okay. The women are gaming and the dudes are gaming. That's just the way it goes. Unfortunately, we're playing these games with each other to the detriment of our community, our family, and ourselves. So, what? How much is too much? I don't understand the question. Okay, how many chances do you give someone? If it's new to people, if it's new to them, and you want to give them the benefit of the doubt, hey. I know your old girlfriends lied to you when they said they would understand the whole thing about men and maybe you wanting to experience something different. We've had our time of being exclusive to each other. You showed me you could do that. But, um, you know, now it's been enough time and I see you looking around but when I ask you about it you kind of giving me the blank stare like you know you're scared to really speak your mind and I've been asking you you haven't been telling me but I know you're interested in so and so or whatever mm -hmm. you know how many chances do you do that or the woman that you know I know that she's spending more time online talking to these guys or talking to these women and just like how we saw in some of those other clips, people get involved in a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So you know what your partner likes and don't like. If right. you have it, don't know, you have to be really paying attention. True. And shame on you. Mm -hmm. But you know what they like and don't like. Right. And people get into a lot of things. And when you see that, and you don't have serious discussions about that and set some things up, mm -hmm. you set yourself up for failure. 
like the one with the woman, the husband was allowing certain things to go on sexually because mm-hmm. she needed more than he could offer right. and then she started doing it without him knowing and all this sneaking around and this and that, which is kind of like, how do you, how do you go from that? You go from open to close. Right. You go backwards. It doesn't make any <laughs> sense. It just doesn't. How long is too long is a relationship by relationship question. There's no standard answer to that as far as I'm concerned. Um, you can come to that conclusion based on how long you've been with the person, how much the person means to you, if you're just shacking up with that person, if you're in a committed relationship with that person, if that person is your partner, if that person is married to you. There could be a whole lot of different things that will factor into how long is too long. If you are asking me personally what I feel is too long, I'm going to explain to you how I feel. We're going to have the conversation about how I feel. If I don't feel you paying attention to that, we may have the conversation a second time, but we're not going to have it a third time. That's me. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work for everybody. That might not work for a majority of people. But for my comfort level, I'm saying pretty much I'm the three strikes you're out girl. Because that ain't three strikes, that's two strikes. Well, the third strike would be you out. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like, I mean, I've said, I've told you how I felt. That's like you saying to me, something I'm doing is hurting you or harmful to you or you're not comfortable with it. But I keep doing it. How many times do you have to tell me that? You tell me that person one time. That hurts me. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. And then I'm going to do it again? Yeah. Why? That means, what are you saying to that person Sometimes when you do it again? Sometimes it's habit. They don't know. How many times is it going to be habit? If I'm telling you that it hurts me. What I say is, once they made aware, then... We're not going through this 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's absurd. So Yeah, but people are stuck in absurdity. You know that. They're married to absurdity. So once you tell the person that, if they really don't get it and they do it again, it's like, look, you know what? I told you. And you obviously don't get it. So maybe it's something that you need some help with. Right. So we can can devise a plan Mm -hmm. or you can go find some help on your own. But if it happens again, we're done. Because I can't do this back and forth, especially when I've let you know. Yes. Okay, and we have to get better at this. So Stali said best, you you with somebody, black men and black women spend too much time making each other miserable. Mm -hmm. You with somebody you cannot be in agreement with, leave them alone. Period. It doesn't matter how many children you have and this and that. If you gotta eat the beans and rice, get to cooking. Mm -hmm. If you gotta stink on your mother's couch, and put your kids in her bedroom until you get some things together. Do what you got to do. Because all you're going to do is Stop find your breaking point. You're not going to make it better. You're only going to find your breaking point. Right. When do you think is, and okay, I'm, I'll finish on this. When you think people now is bad in our community. So we're under a very different and unique kind of strength. So me and you meet, we're trying to get together. How do we know each other's status as far as like HIV? You have to have that conversation. You have to ask. These days you have to ask. If you're going to sleep with someone, it's important to have that conversation. Like, and everybody wants to say, oh yeah, I'm disease and drug free. Okay. You been tested? You you should ask the question. You really should ask the question. And so what if I just really I mean And some can't. people lie. I mean and we I heard want, that today. Both things lie. And and I'm like, well, I did ask and she did say no and it's looking you looking good to me and I just man, you know, I need that. Mm-hmm. That's a chance you're taking. Especially if you don't know the person telling you the truth. You ain't gonna know. 
You are, you, it's the truth. You don't know. Just like the brother is, said is on that, the video. Is that the you new proof know. of relationship now for black couples is to go get tested together? And that means it makes it official for us? Or pop your, pop your paper on the table. Look, I've been tested for the last six months, so I'm good. You know, I mean, it sounds absurd, but that's where we are. That is the state of the world. You're right. It does sound absurd, but that's we we're definitely there. Well, I say this: if you're not gonna do that, then you better box a minimum mess and get to working. That's it. Like Absolutely. you know what she said that. But just the booty in case. was good, <laughs> right? But I'm gonna drink this eight-hour bottle. <laughs> take my dose every hour to make sure I flush my body good because I don't want no problems. That's it. 100%. I mean, it's just serious on a serious note. That's that's where that, that's and for like, the females wow. too. You know, you that is like wow. Make your six drop dose and do shagioni. This, this is the problem. You know, it's not just the men or the women. It's both. And we love to go by what the newscasters and other people are telling us. But if you really look at it, bottom line. It's both. Sure. Black no, women you are can't point the finger at any one And black person. men. And the bottom line is us. Mm -hmm. So I guess, you know, black people should be kind of, you know, you should be, if, if I was a white person, you messing with you. Mm -hmm. Y'all are dying. And I don't really, to be honest, they, they can say, well, I'm not racist, I'm not this and that and that. But to be honest, I don't feel like taking that fucking chance. Mm -hmm. Can you blame them? Well, how you going to say, don't blame the devil for the stuff that they're doing? Exactly. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're absolutely right. So, again, in both of those clips, you kind of come back to the whole thing of, well, you know, I kind of look at it for what it is. You got to kind of accept and deal with that. Mm -hmm. Start getting more self-love, self-work going on. And understand that somebody's wanting, whether they feel like it's a need or a desire to be with someone else, has nothing to do with your self-esteem and self-work. Right. So it is not you cutting work, you cutting their head off or blowing their pot off or banging their windows out or doing whatever because your heart hurt or your butt hurt mm -hmm. because they don't want to be with you anymore. And yeah, people lie. Men lie and women lie. So if they lie, hey, guess what? You lie. You slept with somebody else. You told me you was only sleeping with me. And I told you not to do that. Yeah, I didn't tolerate that. And just leave them alone. Right. There's no drama. There's no back and forth. There's no need if you that. believe that that's what they've done, Nothing they say is going to change your mind anyway. And if you understand that and you find that out and you accept that and you stay, stay and shut up about it. Oh my gosh. You can't that's a whole talk other, on it That's another forever. conversation, sis. That's another conversation <laughs> about the whole, if you're going to stay, stay. Okay, so write that down. We can do that one next. If you're going to stay, stay. You know, that's what a shock is on. Isn't it? We were just talking about her today, will It sure is. Stay sure is. Okay. Well, well, thank my, you. All right, thank you. That's good. Thought of checking that out.